Sister Anne, um, chair for this uh, very important occasion to you too, Tessa. Uh, Aki for the uh, co-chair for the International Day of World Indigenous Peoples. Um, I noticed you, you did stress peoples. This is uh, the theme, uh, voices of the indigenous peoples coming together. And I, I like that you, you um, the coordinators, the organizers stress that word peoples um, to emphasize that we have different cultures present. And allow me to, um, if I should drive a little bit, I just want to take about 30, uh, 60 seconds of this uh, song. I uh, hope you could hear it. Can you hear that? Yes. Yeah. That is from one of our lectures, instructors from the Garifuna University Without Walls, Mr. James Lovell. I think that uh, Sister Relisha, who is one of, on the panel today, was one of uh, his students when he went back to St. Vincent many, many years ago to teach the language to St. Vincent. Because the St. Vincent Garifuna um, wanted to know more about the language, to learn and to sing, to dance, just like how we do in the Garifuna communities of Belize, the Garifuna communities in Honduras, there are about over 22 Garifuna communities in Honduras, there are about six Garifuna communities in Belize, about six again in uh, Nicaragua, and about three in Guatemala. So I bring greetings from all these Garifuna communities. And, and I also must acknowledge that there are Garifuna communities, large Garifuna communities in the Bronx, New York, in Chicago, and Los Angeles. We just learned that the largest immigrant community in Los Angeles is made up of Garifuna people from uh, Honduras and Belize. I, I say that to say that as we approach uh, asserting our indigeneity uh, and launch this decolonial project, uh, all these factors have to be considered. Um, as president of the Garifuna Nation, the task seems, you know, insurmountable. But with this type of technology, this you know colonial technology, if you like, that we are using presently, we should be able to um, put decolonial decoloniality in practice, which is to discuss what is colonialism and how we engage in the process of decoloniality. I think this discussion, this dialogue, right, that we are having, is one of the um, 
few steps that we could take to share, you know, um, ideas. I had like many uh, months ago when I had heard from this panel, the sites of conscience. And I shared that with my colleagues, you know, um, like for example, in Belize, the building that Marcos Garvey built is that we're not using, making good use of it. And I'm saying that should be a, you know, site of conscience. All the areas that our forefathers have made presence should be sites of conscience. And that's something I'm borrowing from you, just like old brother James borrowed Bob Marley's, you know, stand up for our rights. We put it in Garifuna language and, you know, make some of the language relevant to our, you know, um, spirit and our understanding um, and our ontology, our, our sense of being. Um, it would seem that this move, this drive that we are on, um, even though we are in different locations, the locations, the physical location, perhaps is immaterial, but it is a spirit, right? It is a spirit which um, that the Caribbean brings, that we as Africana people bring to this whole matter of the new move, the new movement. It is a spirit. And so I encourage us to continue the dialogue, be present at the United Nations uh, Permanent Forum for Indigenous Peoples, for Indigenous Issues that I think occurs every May, June in uh, New York. We should be present at the United Nations Permanent Forum for Afro-Descendants that is coming up in December. I'm spreading the word. The World Intellectual Property Organization is also meeting very soon and we should be there um, to make our presence felt. The United Nations Education, Science, um, Agriculture uh, Organization, UNESCO, proclaimed in 2001 that the Garifuna language music is an intangible gift to humanity. It's a masterpiece gift to humanity. It's a big thing. What I'm saying, don't just celebrate the intangibles, the music, the language. Give us the tangibles, right, Lucian? Give us the tangibles, give us the mechanisms and the tools. For example, the Garifuna Nation has insisted that we have our own Garifuna University with our walls. We are insisting that we will have a federal credit union so that these would be the agencies to empower our people so that we can make ourselves more permanent with the other nations. Greetings once again, and let's continue this dialogue to empower our people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Egbert. Thank you very much, Mr. Ikenio. Uh